Welcome to this second part in the video series. What are we going to be covering in today's video? This is the first of the tutorial videos made on the A310. The first part of this video series was a welcome to the A310, showing some of the history and some of the features on the A310. This is going to be the new to airliners tutorial video, where we will be flying from Ibiza to Nice Airport. And we will be using the in-sim checklist system and we will be keeping things more on a procedural level. What do I mean by this? I mean, we're gonna be talking about, we click this button to do this button to do this, and that's how we're gonna proceed. Not so much technical explanations, more of just getting you up and going with the aircraft to be able to do this flight and any others you wish to do in the sim. So without further ado, let's start that now. Okay, let's quickly talk about the checklist systems that are built in to the A310. To access them, we simply move our mouse or Xbox controller to the top of the screen, and you can see we have checklists. Once we click these, it expands to show all of the checklists that are available for the A310. Seems like there's quite a lot here, but this is everything you need to cover normal operations. Now, let's start with the very first one, the preliminary cockpit preparation. So if we click it, you can see we have a few options going on here and let's just explain this a little bit. So we've got the item that we need to click. So batteries on the left and on the right here, it's what it needs to be in. So they need to be in auto. You might ask yourself, well, I don't know where they are. Where are they? Well, I've got something to help you there. If you click the little symbol of the eye, it will take you, your camera, up to where this item is and it will highlight that in blue. So it's showing you where you need to click. Let's have a look at another one. Hydraulic pa panel, it's saying check and it's highlighting the arrows in blue. Makes sense. This is what we're gonna use for most of the video. Me going through this and explaining a few little items along the way. But we have two other options for completing this page. Now, what we're gonna do is reset our camera's position to the back and try out the autocomplete feature. So we now have the checklist open the same as before and we're going to click auto complete page. Now what this will do is it will run through all of the different items and just do it automatically without you having to do anything. There we go. So we can see everything's been ticked, everything's been complete and we want to move on to the next one. We can click flight deck preparation, auto complete checklist. Now, some of these, the very long ones, this one as well, the flight deck preparation, you might see a little bit of sim slowdown. That's due to the fact there's so many items being executed in one go. Uh, once it's finished, that will go away completely. But we're not gonna go through this too much. It just shows you this is the simplest and easiest way to get up and going. You can just go through each one of these checklists for the phase that you're in, autocomplete, 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 and it will do everything for you. So let's go back and have a look at the evaluation phase. Okay, let's quickly talk about the evaluation function built into the checklist. What are they and what do we expect when we click on them? So we've already looked at the autocomplete page. If we click evaluation, what we're going to expect is we're going to expect the SIM to read the item to us. So batteries, auto, and they will automatically click them on. Hydraulic panel, check, and it will pause because it's unable to check this. We will need to do a check for that. We will come to this in the tutorial, so let's not worry about that now. And we will tick the item manually. Then it will say Windows wipers off. It can check that. Gear lever down. It can check that. Slats and flaps in agreement, and it will pause again. Let's run that now and have a look what it looks like. So all I'm going to do is click Evaluation. Batteries. Auto. Hydraulic panel. And you can see it's not said check because it doesn't know. So we have to click Tick item. Check. Wiper switches, off, gear lever, down, slats slash flaps handle. And it pauses now. So we're not gonna go any more into explanation for this, but I think what you can see is it's like an intermediate between doing it yourself, doing a full autocomplete. And this is like having a pilot next to you doing things, and then you might have to manually tick some of the items which is what we'll cover in the tutorial series. So, hope that makes sense. Quick overview of the difference between autocomplete and evaluation. Now what we're gonna do is reset the aircraft up again and start the tutorial from the beginning with myself doing every item and giving a bit of explanation. 
So, let's get back to that. Okay, let's start the tutorial part of this video. I've turned off the assisted checklist and autocomplete options. We're going to go through these checklists one by one. I'm going to go and tell you and press the buttons myself. Okay, so let's start with the preliminary cockpit preparation. So, batteries. These need to be set to auto. There's three batteries. One, two, three. You can hear some noises. The plane is now being powered from the batteries. So that's good. Tick this item. Hydraulic panel check. So that looks good. We're checking that these needles are in the green bands. Wiper switches to off. They're both off. Gear lever down. So we're checking that the landing gear levers down, which it is slat and flap handle in agreement so we're checking that it's at zero and zero which it is looks good reverse thrust down so see this bit here that the forward bit we're checking that it's down not in the up position in the up position it would be pointing more straight up towards the ceiling so this looks good tick fuel levers checking that they're both off they are that's good Weather radar we're checking is off, which it is. Weather radar has three positions. System one, off. System two, off. So that looks good. External power, if available, establish. Now, what does it mean by this? So the external power is basically like a big plug that you plug into the bottom of the aircraft and it will give the plane all the electrical power it needs. Because at the moment, remember, we're only running on the batteries, which isn't enough. So how do we know if it's available or not? So you see the little veil in green here. Yeah. So that means available. So I'm going to click it on and now it goes in blue and you can see all of the different things light up. And we have a lot of noise, all the fans and the whole plane is now powered. So that's normal. Good. APU fire system. Test. Now, what is the APU? The APU is the auxiliary power unit. It's a very small jet engine in the tail of the aircraft that supplies electrical power and air for the plane. Now, before we start it, we want to check if the fire detection system works. Makes sense, right? So let's do that now. So we hold this button down. We're listening for the looking for the lights and listening for the noise. Hear the noise. Let go of the button and the light should go out. There we go, the lights have gone out. And now we need to do the second part of the test, which is for the fire extinguishers. And you see the little squib that lights up in amber. When we see that, let go of the button, looks good. APU as required. So remember, we're gonna start the auxiliary power unit. So we just click this switch to on, wait about three seconds, all looks good. We can tick that. And now we can press this button here. This is the start button. We put the master switch on first, and then we press the start button. So now we can see the on light, and that's showing that it's starting. The whole process is automatic, don't have to worry about it. So that's all looking good. IRS mode selectors, let's go up to them. So we've got three of them. We've got number one, nav, number two, to nav, and number three, to nav. So that's all we do, that looks good. ISDU, which is this panel here, just looks good. Nothing else needs to be done there. Here, oxygen low pressure supply, turn it on, make sure that we're in the green band. That looks good. Annunciator light test. Now, this switch down here at the bottom, what we're going to do is we're going to move it and drag it up to the test position. So when we do that, all of the different lights of the plane come on and we'll hear a sound which is a self test so we're going to do that now there we go and we can see all the lights come on across the plane looks good back to the normal bright position checked radios this is normal radio so this is our frequency we're talking on this is what we select to talk to we can left click and then right click to pull this out turn the volume up so this is our volume selector who we're talking to and the frequency all integrated into the default atc system in the sim so we can use that great so that is the preliminary cockpit preparation done let's move on fmc 
So, here we go. Now, this is one of our first bigger topics. So, what is the FMC? The FMC is the Flight Management Computer. And it says, initialize using MCDU. Let's not worry about that for now. That's basically another word for this thing that we're looking at here, the screen and the keyboard. But we're going to program the Flight Managed Computer via this screen and keyboard. Now it's definitely the brains of the aeroplane. The flight management computer works out how far we can go, how much fuel we're going to use, we need to tell it where we're going to go to, where we're going to go from, how we're going to get there. All of this stuff is done via this thing here. So let's start. So clear messages, press clear button. So we have the little clear button at the bottom, we pressed it, and you can see all of the messages have gone. Sometimes there's a few of them. So you might need to keep pressing clear, but there was only one. So that's now clear in this area here. So done that. Press init at the init button. See it here. Press that. Enter from two airports. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, every airport on earth has a four letter code for it. Now, you can find this out by um, going onto the VFR map up here and we can see this is where we currently are we can zoom in and we can actually zoom back out again and eventually you will see it populates LEIB see that so that's our four letter code now I recommend you find these on the on the flight planning page before you come into your flight but that's just another another way to work out what your code might be for the airport you're at so as we know we're going from LEIB to Nice and Nice's code is L F M N. There is a bit of logic to these codes. L normally stands for Southern Europe. E stands for Spain, Espanol. I B Ibiza. L Southern Europe. F Francais. M Marseille. Nice because it's in the Marseille sector. But that's just a bit of trivia. Don't worry about that for now. It's much easier just to look for them beforehand. So we need to do from to. So remember we're going from Ibiza to Nice. We put that in so we can tick that now it says click return you can click return or none dealer's choice doesn't matter you can click either there done that verify lat long position so this is this position here now this is the position that the computer is saying i think this is where we are and for, for simplicity's sake we're going to say that looks good you don't have to mess with that you don't even mess with that in real life so don't worry about it. align irs so now when we press this button here this is next to the message when we press this the flight management computer is going to go okay okay i know where i am i know i'm going to and now i'm going to calibrate myself on this position that's the best way i can describe it so we click that position now this process takes between i would say seven and ten minutes something like that it depends where you are on the world we simulated that so sometimes it can take longer sometimes it can take less so we now have to wait. How do we know it's finished? Well, on the screen above us, there's a little prompt that says IRS in a line. And that means it's doing its calibration process. When that little message is gone, then it's finished. And also our main screens, when they start to show blue and the brown, like we normally would with a pitch indicator for any type of plane, then we know it's aligned. When it's in this state where it's just red and black, then it's not finished. So we can move on now. So we've done that. No smoking set to auto. Done that. Because there's definitely no smoking on these flights any day now. <laughs> Seatbelt signs to on. Hydraulic power panel. Sounds fancy, right? So just checking that all this looks good. You know, if there's no fault lights, things in the wrong position, but it should be set up correctly. So that looks good. Servo control panel. Now you might say, oh, there's lots of fault lights there. That's normal. Okay, these fault lights are because there's no hydraulic pressure. That's to be expected. So that's good. This one, flight recorder ground control. Put it on. It goes blue. It will turn itself off when the engine starts. That's normal. And now we're going to go down to the lights. So, nose switch to off, which it is. Landing light switches to retracted, which they are. Wing light off, which we can see here. So it is off. Strobe switches to auto, which it is. Beacon switch to off, which it is. Both of these runway turnoffs 
left and right to off and nav and logo to system number one now you can have it as off one or two it doesn't matter if you're in system one or system two they're just a backup of each other but the normal is to leave it in system one so that looks good tip for you for the airbus when the wind when the switch is towards the window so you see how this is now towards the window that's off but it's not like a boeing they it doesn't all go towards the window the switches always go down for off so it's always down for off regardless of where it is make more sense later on don't worry about it. nav and logo we've done that so the next one is the ats switches so this is the auto throttle system also referred to as auto thrust system doesn't really matter it automatically controls our speed and we just turn it on both of them so number one and number two Hitch, trim, and your dampers, and it says on, IRS must be aligned. Now, what does this mean? Okay, so let's ignore the checklist. Let's just turn it on, like this. And did you see how the pitch trims turned themselves off? Um, they didn't stay on like the other switches. Why is that? Well, the reason is, remember we said that little IRS align message thing, and the, the whole looking at the colors, or the blues and the browns? That needs to be there before can switch these on now that's really important that's something that's gonna catch a lot of people out because it's very strange but it's how the real airplane works so remember I said it can take five or six minutes I'm gonna wait here now until that little IRS message goes away and we can click it on okay just to keep things in the normal flow and I've been going quite quick so probably by the time you come to this in a normal checklist you'd be able to click on so I'm gonna join you back here in a few more minutes Okay, we don't have the little message anymore, so let's try and turn the pitch trims on. See? They don't turn off anymore, so they're latched. So now we're good to go. Now that is a really... I cannot emphasize how important that step is, okay? So, electrical power panel check. We're just checking to see if everything is looking good. So this galley light needs to come off like that, because we don't want it to be shed. That just means it's turned off, so that's good. Engine one fire panel. What is this? So let's move this over here. So remember, like we did with the auxiliary power unit, we need to do exactly the same thing here. So hold the button down, wait for the lights, listen for the sound, let go, wait for the lights to go out. There we go. Press this fire extinguisher test. So remember, we're looking for the squib. There's just two of them now, agent one and agent two. And that is completed. Making sure that these are an emergency and essential. They are not that important, that one. So the engine panel selector to off. So we're making sure that this switch is in the off position. So you can see that if it's in any other position, these little lights come on. All right, okay, so we need to select all the fuel pumps on, apart from the one on the bottom left. That's actually a mode selector. So this one here, we leave it alone. APU fire, check and test. You might say, but we already did that. That's true. Remember, before it was more of a question, do you want to start the auxiliary power unit? I recommend when you're starting, just, just do it. Just start it in that order. But this is if you haven't started it already. So we can just say, yes, we've done that. That's fine. Because we've already done it. You can do it again if you want. It won't do any harm. Cabin, pressure panel check. All looks good. All the needles look normal. So that's good. Window heater switches. They can come on. These are the heaters for the, the pilot's windows at the front because they're permanently heated. So you have little gold filaments in. Probe heat switches to on. So these are these. And can you see how each of these above it are what these buttons are controlling? So turn them all on. All the amber lights go out. And that's all the probes on the outside of the plane. So it's really important that you turn those on. Engine to fire panel. So that's just the same as we did before. I'm not going to talk about it again. I'm just going to do it. Looks good. Yeah. Successful test. Ventilation panel. We're looking for this green line to be, so you can see it comes up from here. We want it to be left, not to the right. Otherwise, something is wrong. That looks good. Emergency exit lights to arm. So can you see it has three positions? Disarm, arm, on. So it should be in arm. Good. Now, this is another one. 
if APU bleed, so let's take a look at the camera for that. So, if APU bleed switch is off, now, is it off? Yes, because we haven't turned it on yet, right? So it is off. We need to make sure that this little green line shows vertical, which it does. So that's good. If APU is running, we have already started it, remember? We did the fire test on it, we started it. So it is on. APU bleed switch on. So this is the switch here. Click it to on, and you'll actually hear a lot of different changes, and things will start configuring themselves. So remember, I told you that the auxiliary power unit did both air conditioning and, well, air, I told you it did air and electrics. So we've now turned the air conditioning on, and that's coming from the auxiliary power unit. So that's how you turn it on. All done. That's all you need to do. Just flick the switch. Everything else is automatic. Condition temperature panel set and check. So this is here. We can leave it alone. It's uh, it's all set to auto, which is absolutely fine. That's about 23, 24 degrees Celsius. Pack temperature panel. So that's, again, I'm clicking the button, but it's the same camera view here. Check is in auto. It is in auto, so that's all good. This is up here. Oxygen panel check. So we've already checked that before, remember? It's now in the green, 100% sure. What is this? So this is the, the brightness knobs here. These control the upper and the lower screen. So the top screen is the PFD, the lower screen is the ND, and we have one for the captain, one for the first officer. So one each, so one PFD, one PFD, one ND, one ND. They're normally set in the correct position, so no need to adjust them. We have the FD, FPV switch, okay? So we have to make sure this is in normal. Normally it's left in this position, but it can also be dragged down to off and the uh, upper position, but it should be fine. FMA displays FD1 on captain and FD2 on FO. So we wanna make sure that we have that white symbol on the top right of both of the screens. Command bars are in view. These are just the green bars. As long as they're in view, so you can see the green bars, all good. VOR nav ILS switch. So we need to make sure that this is in nav. It has the VOR position, ILS position, and nav position. So we wanna make sure it's in nav. DH, press. So we press the DH button. And then normally this is set to zero. So then we need to make sure we set minus five and we leave it like that. So you can see set DH minus five. That's to stop it interfering on takeoff. FCP, which is the flight uh, control panel. We need to check it, which we've done already. Captain switch in panel, which is along the side here. We just make sure there's no lights on, which there's not, so that looks good. Standby airspeed indicator is at zero. RMI is showing no flags, so if the flag's there, there'll be a red flag, it's quite obvious, so that's good. PFD, check no warning messages, so this is the upper screen, remember, don't see any warning messages there. ND, again, no warning messages, so that looks good. Altimeter, ensure there are no flags set, there are none, and set bug to field elevation. So this is the bug here, and you need to set it to where the white arrow is. If you can't do that, it's not a big deal, don't worry about it. IVSI, this little screen here, make sure it says TCAS off flag, which it, uh, so you, you don't want to see TCAS off, so that's good. ADF RMI, which is this instrument here, make sure that there's within one degree it's absolutely fine e gpws button here this is a button if you press it it will run a long series of tests where basically it will um it will call a lot of warnings out things like that i'm not going to do it just to save time but you just press that button automatic does the test clock that looks good as well clock is here standby altimeter is this one here and that all looks good to me so we've got the standby horizon which is up here as well which all looks good as well so slap and flat position indicator which is here we make sure that it's at zero remember we looked at the handle before it's at zero so that looks good a little bit of explanation of how, of how these this works so zero zero 15 15 20, 20, 30, 40. They're the different settings, and these are degrees. So this is your degrees of slap, this is your degrees of flap, and in the middle, this is your maximum speed. 
for the maximum speed for the first setting is 245 knots, 210 knots, 195 knots and 108 knots. So if you're ever unsure of the speed, have a look at the instrument and it will show you. Brake pressure gauge, this is making sure it's in the green. You can see this is the green arc here, it's just inside the green. It can actually be below the green, we have simulated that, and uh, but for now it looks good. Alternate braking system, so we want to move our camera down a little bit now. We want to make sure that this is in the on position. It can be in the alternate on and alternate off. We want to make sure that it's in the normal position at the top. Okay. Parking brake, we want to make sure it's set to on. Order brake switches, we make sure that these are all off at this stage. And they shouldn't arm anyway. Reversers and unlock lights, so these are the lights up here. We want to make sure that they're off. Engine instruments, they look good. Landing elevation set. So we want to make sure we set our landing elevation here. So I know for the Nice Airport is pretty much at sea level, so it's around something like 20, 50 feet up. Now let's, for example, say we were flying to Denver. I think Denver's around four or 5,000 feet up. You would have to set like this. You'd have to set it before you, you take off, okay? So that's where you set your landing elevation. For us today, it's gonna to be 50 feet I'm gonna set. And if it goes red, it's negative, see? So negative, normal. So let's leave it like that. And that's all simulated, so if you don't set it, it will cause problems. Landing gear warning test. Press it down. Okay, we hear the noise, it looks good. Brake fan, which is here. We'll just make sure it's off. Wait, well, it could be on if they were hot, but they're not. Speed brake handle. Now, you can see when I pull it up, it goes to arm. If I pull it down, this is it disarmed, armed, disarmed, and then I can drag it and drag it all the way back but where we want it is in this position here. So we want it in the retract disarm position, so the down position. Take off warning. So now we're gonna press the take off warning button, which is here, and we expect to hear a noise. Right, so it's basically us checking now, hey, does the take off system actually work? Because are we ready for takeoff right now? No, we're not. The engines are off <laughs> and we're sitting at the gate, so it's, it's correct that it gave a warning. Fuel levers making sure they're still off. This, we're making sure that they're safe tied. So this actually in real life has a piece of wire that goes around it to make sure it's safe tied. So if it's closed like it is now, we're good to go. You can open this up if you, if you want to. And anyway, this all functions as well. ATC transponder system, set squawk. Uh, we don't need to set anything. It's not using ATC today. ADFs, this one here. Make sure the tone is on and the ADFs are to ADF or ANT, whichever is needed. But the ADF ANT function, it, it's not simulated, so it's fine to leave these for whatever you want. Rudder trim, we need to set this to zero, so we basically just hold this button down and make sure the display above it sets zero. Weather radar, we set to test, so we move this to the test, test function, and it will display a test image, but that's fine for now and we'll set it back to that. FMS root program, okay. So, now we get back. Okay, so here we are back at the flight management computer. I mean, now we need to program nearly all the rest of the information in. So, we're gonna start on clearing any more messages. They're all gone, so we can tick that off. Init A, so remember when we click this button, we come to the init A page, which we're on now. So it says, alternate so that's what a l t n stands for so we don't have to put one in we're going to put one in because we're going to be good boys so that's l f m l so that's marseille airport and we're going to put that in again we can click return and then we're basically just saying this is the airport we want to go to if we can't land in nice don't have to worry about any more than that cost index now what's cost index it's a number between zero and one thousand tells the plane how efficient do I want to get there. So if you leave it at zero, it's going to use the minimal amount of fuel, but also take the most amount of time. If you put in 1000, it's going to go as fast as it physically can and not care about fuel. But practically, practically speaking, the number is between zero and 100. Because anything above 100 makes no difference at all, basically. L literally no difference. So let's think of it this way if you say zero that's most efficient 50 
it's like halfway between. I want to get there quite quickly, but I also want to care a little bit about my fuel. 100 means I don't care about my fuel, I just want to get there quickly. So a number that a lot of A310 operators use is 40. So we can use 40. Cost index 40. Then we need to look at what? Cruise flight level, so how high are we going to go up? And we're going to go up to 380, so 38,000 feet. Flight ID, that's our call sign, so today we're going to be INI001. Type that in. And then we need to look at the weather, but today, clear weather, so not a problem. We can leave the rest of that, so we can tick that. Next is flight plan. And this is a bit more complicated, okay? So we click on the flight plan button, which is this one here. And we now are presented with some information, okay? So we've got LEIB, LFMM, LFML. So what are these, remember? This is where we are, where we're going to, and where's our alternate. So we need to tell the flight management computer, how am I gonna get from here to here? So first of all, you need to say, how am I gonna get out of Ibiza? So you click on the, the code, and then you see it says SID, Standard Instrument Departure. So that's the standard routing out of the airport. There's many of them. You click on it. First of all, you need to tell it what runway you want to use. So today we're going to use runway 06. And we're going to use the Cabana to Romeo departure. Okay. So we're going on this departure from that runway. And now you must click Insert. Otherwise, none of that information will go in. So there we go. Boom, it's inserted. Great. Now we're going to tell it how are we going to arrive into Nice. Now we must use the scroll function. Okay, now scrolling, you're going to say to me, okay, I want to go down the flight plan. Right? I want to go down the flight plan. I'm going to press the down arrow. How come nothing happens? Well, Airbus and give them credit, right, it was very early on, they were trying to think of this. Because these were some of the first computers that someone may have interacted with, ever. I genuinely mean that, right? Is they thought it was like scrolling text on a barrel. That's how they describe it. So, you move the barrel down to move the text down, right? So you move the barrel that way, so now it goes, click this, and you click up to move the flight plan up your screen so that that's how you go down the flight plan. So just simplify it in your head, it's basically reversed. You want to go down the flight plan, you press the up arrow. You want to go up the flight plan, you press the down arrow. That's how, that's how I think of it. You get used to it quite quickly and luckily when you reach the top it locks you out so you, you can't ever go too wrong. Okay. So we're going to go down the flight plan, pressing the up arrow, till we get to LFMN, remember, Nice, click on it. Now, Notice we don't have a departure on this side, we have an arrival, star, so that's not like a shooting star or a star in the sky. It's the same thing as the departure that we just selected, but for arrival. So it's a standard terminal arrival routing, don't quote me on that, but that might be right. So we click on it. So now we also need to say what runway we're going to land on, and it's runway 04 left by the ILS. ILS stands for Instrument Landing System. It's the easiest and most common type of landing system. So we want to select the ILS 04 left. And what arrival do we want to use? We want to use this one, the Alba 7 Romeo. Okay, so we click that. So now we've got the Alba 7 Romeo, ILS 07 left, and now we click Insert. So it's as similar as the departure thing, but this is for the arrival. Insert. Boom. And now we've got two pieces of bread. Think of it like a sandwich. We've got our departure, we've got our arrival. We need to fill in the middle, right? We need to tell it how to get from the end of the departure to the start of the arrival. So we do our funky scrolling, remember? And we look for this waypoint here, K-Bear. And we look at our flight plan routing. And our flight plan routing says that we must go to l -Tan. E L T A N. Now, notice how I clicked on the waypoint and then you click in new waypoint, okay? New waypoint there, boom. So now it's K Bear, L Town. Sounds good. Now we do something a little bit different. 
we click on L10 again and we don't use the new waypoint okay so because in our flight plan it tells us to use a thing called the UN853 and if you type UN853 in here it's not going to work because it's not a waypoint it's an airway what's an airway an airway is like a highway in the sky it's exactly what it is it's a route that all the planes take when they want to go on a certain direction and you basically you need to know your exit ramp off your highway which is effectively what we're going to do now so let's have a look so we click on airway and there's the one that we want to get on at we want to get on the UN853 remember and what's our exit well our exit is Lumas I can't see it here so keep scrolling keep scrolling keep scrolling there's Lumas so let's get off at Lumas boom that's it so now the plane knows right that's the highway we're going with in the sky we go through that and we get off at Lumas so now we scroll down again you can see it's kind of a repetitive position so now we say hey we want to go on that highway and we want to use the UM976 and we want to get off at MRM boom bom, bom, bom. keep scrolling keep scrolling so now we want to go from MRN on the highway and we want to use the UY122 this one here to Ablak which makes sense so now notice Ablak Ablak hey we have now have a route right so we now have a route that makes sense and connects all together so we don't want to have two Ablaks though makes sense we don't want two of the same way so we're going to delete this one and then we're going to delete the gap between it okay so if we click clear so now we see clear is written in here if we click clear again it goes away so if we click that i'm going to do it so we click clear so clear is in there and we want to clear this waypoint boom so it's gone deleted so now we want to clear this discontinuity this gap in the flight plan boom and now the whole flight plan is all connected together all the way from start all the way to the very end and that's our whole flight plan put in okay so I know it's confusing I know it's complicated this is literally one of the most complicated parts of the whole plane to understand so just do it a few times when you get your head around it it will start to make sense Sid and Star Airways enter done performance data so now we're going to go and do our performance which we're going to go and do on the electronic flight bags join me there